Hello. Welcome to this presentation in the ICAA webinar series. I'm really pleased today that we were sharing with you many of the resources that you can use for your Active Aging Week events. As you know, the larger theme of Active Aging Week is Live Your Adventure. And then within each day of the week, there's going to be a focus. There's a lot of exciting information for you today from the sponsors of the week, and we certainly appreciate it. Before we begin giving you a review of all the possibilities for your weeks, I wanted to bring your attention to the fact that this webinar is being recorded. It will be posted on the ICAA website so you can watch it again yourselves or with your team members. If you look on the lower left side of your screen, there's a chat box. As we go along, please place your questions and comments into that box and hit send. All of the presenters will answer as many questions as possible at the end of their presentations, and if they don't have a chance to do so during this hour today, then they will answer your questions by email after the fact. Also in the chat box, you'll find the number to call in for the telephone lines, and then if you have technical issues during the webinar, please contact customer care. Thank you so much. And I'm very pleased to introduce you to our first speaker, Colin Milner, founder of ICAA, who's going to give us a brief introduction to Active Aging Week. Hello, Colin. Welcome. Well, thank you, Pat, and thank you, everyone, for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us. I'm thrilled that you are here. Uh, we're very excited to have you involved in this, the 12th Active Aging Week uh, celebration, and each year continues to get bigger and bigger uh, because of you and your efforts. Uh, matter of fact, last year was the largest Active Aging Week celebration that we have ever had. We had well over 3,000 organizations participate in that. Uh, we also had, can you believe it, over 170 million media impressions uh, throughout North America. So you guys and ladies out there are doing just a fantastic job, and we are thrilled to have you involved in this year as well. Now, with this year, our theme is Live Your Adventure. And what an exciting theme it is because any and everyone can live their adventure their way. And as you know, Active Aging Week is all about you and your residents and your members and how you want to put together your week. But what we have done over last year, and really this year is truly the first full year into offering ideas to help you along that way through ICAA theme days. And the objective of these theme days is to provide you with additional resources, because resources sometimes can be a tough thing to come by, to help you deliver different promotions and different uh, activities during Active Aging Week. So today you're going to learn about if you're going to start your activity and your, uh, your adventure, uh, you know, you better have taken care of your feet because there's nothing like having foot problems to actually limit your adventure. You're going to learn about you know, the Walk with Aegis Therapies program that is just blossoming with each and every year. And you're going to say hello to our new partners. Uh, and you know, uh, they are going to range from a uh, caption call that is going to uh, help you with some amazing tools. Uh, along with Swimex that is going to help you in regards to how to take advantage of all the different events that's available in your pool. And of course, what would an event be without some good food? Uh, so you're going to learn about good things that come from Cisco. And finally, uh, an area that many of us aren't even really truly aware of, and that is the impact that your skin health has on active aging. With that said, I'm going to turn this uh, meeting over to Pat, and I am so excited for you to learn all about these new theme days that can help you with more tools 
to do a better job so that this year is the very best active aging week to date. Pat, it's all yours. Thanks, Colin, and thank you for that great introduction. And I have to say, lots of adventures are in the works here. So without further ado, I, in turn, am going to turn the mouse over to Bob Thompson. He's the Executive Director of the Institute for Preventive Foot Health, and he's going to talk to us about our fee. Hi, Bob. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thanks, Pat, and thanks, Colin, and hello to everyone. Well, IPH is excited about being part of Active Aging Week once again and having the opportunity to help people before they engage in all the wonderful activities that you've got planned. It's helpful to start out with some context to help ensure that the members of your communities who participate in the events you have planned for them uh, will do so successfully. So much so we hope that they'll want to keep coming back for more of the fun you have in store for them well after Active Aging Week concludes. At IPH, we believe that mobility is medicine, and preventive foot health is foundational for mobility as well as for general well-being. Feet are really little miracles attached to the end of our legs designed to carry us everywhere we go for a complete lifetime, whether it's a walk in the neighborhood or an expedition to the top of a mountain peak. Our feet take us there. So being active starts with our feet. We don't want everyone, anyone, to ever utter those activity-ending words, my feet are killing me. So let's turn to some of the resources in the form of articles, videos, and handouts that we posted on the IPAA website in the hope of avoiding that comment ever being made at all. Pat, I'm going to have to ask you to advance. My mouse doesn't seem to want to advance the slide. Thank you very much if you did that. <laughs> this slide identifies five primary topics that can help give you a good foundation and introduction to preventive foot health. All five can be accessed by uh, going to the ICA website and hitting this link right there. They'll each provide you with some great background. The first is a primer about preventive foot health. You'll want to talk with your community members about good foot hygiene, proper care of their toenails, and what to do about blisters or calluses, hopefully before they occur. The second topic is geared more to the individual who's a caregiver for someone else, whether that's someone on your staff or a family member. And that article discusses what you can do to help that person become the most active participant that he or she can be. Three specialty articles we've posted for you deal with persons with diabetes, arthritis, and obesity, and how those conditions affect foot health. They all include recommendations you can share with your community members. Something as simple as helping those with diabetes remember not to cross their legs, for instance, because that could reduce or cut circulation to the lower limbs, or how to test the temperature of bathing water by using their elbows instead of their feet. Doing so could mean the difference between keeping their feet healthy or allowing them to become injured. Next slide, please. There are um, four video links at the bottom of the ICA webpage where our articles have been posted, and those videos correlate to the topics listed on that page. Sometimes video is a more effective communications tool, as you know, than asking someone to sit down and read through an article. And do feel free to attach uh, or link our video files to your own website if that might make them more accessible to your community members. Next slide, please. There we go. There's one special overriding issue that really supports good foot health, protects the feet, and enables us to stay active as we age, and that's skin soft tissue management. We'll learn more about this for the whole body later on, but this is specifically for feet. More simply stated, it's caring for the fat pads on the bottom of your feet. If you take the time to read through the document that will pop up when you click this link, and it's also set up as a hot link at the bottom of the ICA web page, by the way, you'll understand why it can become less fun to be on our feet as we age if we don't protect our fat pads. We all start out with healthy protective fat pads when we're born, but as we age, our fat pads can break down and leave us standing uncomfortably on thin-skinned, unprotected bony prominences on those hard surfaces we have to walk across every day. Next slide, please. What we're going to help protect the feet in light of fat pad degradation is what we call the integrated approach. You can read about it by clicking on the link at the bottom of the ICAA webpage. Fitting footwear properly, wearing padded socks, 
using over-the-counter or custom-designed orthotics in the shoe if appropriate, and adding any shoe modifications that might be indicated. All these items taken together and fitted as a system at the same time will help minimize any negative impact or lesions, such as blisters, that could develop while engaging in active aging week activities or any other activities, as a matter of fact. We suggest not wearing cotton socks because cotton retains moisture and that can set the stage for fungal infections. Feel free to print out this graphic representation of the integrated approach available at this website right there uh, and make copies of it, distribute them to your community members and to their family members so they can use it as a reminder and a resource whenever they shop for new shoes. Next slide, please. Lastly, we want you and your members of your community to be aware of and use the most popular feature of our IPFH website. It's a foot pain assessment tool, and you can find it right there. With just a few clicks of a mouse, you'll first identify where you feel pain, then the intensity of the pain. You'll see an array of issues based upon those two selections that could be the cause of the pain. Click on any of the possibilities, and you'll see information concerning the possible malady, as well as suggestions to help reduce the pain and enhance healing. While this tool is definitely not to be considered in any way a substitute for a visit to a foot healthcare professional, it can help people point the, it can help point people in the right direction and urge them to seek professional care if appropriate. Final slide, please, Pat. You and your community members have access to all these articles, videos, and extra tools, both through the ICAA and the IPFH website. And we hope you'll take advantage of using them all as you embark on your Live the Adventure activities. Thanks so much for taking the time to participate in today's webinar and for allowing IPFH to share these resources with you. We certainly wish you all the best of luck for a successful Active Aging Week. And if we can help in any way, please don't hesitate to call upon us. Thanks. And thank you, Bob. I really appreciate that overview, as well as all the resources that are available, you know, both in print as well as in the video media. So helpful, I think, for people to be able to distribute. We hope now so. I have one question for you. You've given us a great overview, and you began your presentation saying that we don't want anyone to stop their activities because their feet hurt. And I really appreciate that point of view. Um, do you have an idea? Is that often among older adults? Is there a prevalence of, of foot pain? Uh, is it, how important is it for people to be able to use and distribute these tools? Yes, it's very prevalent, as a matter of fact. Whenever I go into communities, the two things I always hear are, my feet hurt, and it's no fun. So obviously, part of activating weeks to make it fun and our hope is that we'll avoid that first thing, my feet hurt. Oh, that's great to hear. And again, I have to say I appreciate all those resources. Thanks. Well, now that our feet are feeling better and we have resources to get up and get at them, let's go ahead and move into Monday. And our theme for Monday is a walking program, which as probably all of you already know, is a very popular activity during Active Aging Week. And Walk with Ages Therapies is a great promoter of the walking or rolling. And in order to tell us more about the activities that are available, the resources from Walk with Ages Therapies, is Brian Buckout, who's the Vice President of Wellness Services. Welcome, Brian. Thanks, Pat. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. All right. Thank you. And welcome, everybody. I hope everybody's as, as excited as uh, we are about the upcoming uh, Active Aging Week, and, and we hope that um, you'll utilize these tools as well as some of the stuff I'm about to share with you really to, to live your adventure. The, uh, the Walk with Aegis Therapies event, boy, it's been our, we're in our seventh year now um, uh, of this event, and, and the event itself will be celebrated across all the Aegis locations, all of our partner locations across the country, and those include skilled nursing facilities, independent assisted living locations, um, CCRCs, um, senior centers, outpatient clinics, hospitals, et cetera. But, but this year, uh, we've shaped the program um, and, and have added some tools to it that you can link your community at large 
um, or involve your neighbors or schools, or even participate um, from the comfort of your own home individually. As I mentioned, we've been doing this for a while. It was launched as a one-day event back in 2009 um, and has since expanded into a five-day celebration of wellness. Um, last year, we had over 700 facilities participate or communities participate with us, um, and we actually had a walk count or a walk mileage count of over 100,000 miles last year. That's four times around the world to put that in context. Um, so we are very excited about that. And the most important thing, uh, you know, whether you're, you're doing these events as part of your community or alone or with your, your furry best friend, um, the key is to have fun and, and be safe and, and try to uh, promote health and wellness in a, in, a, in a safe way. So how do you get started with the Walk with Aegis event? Well, first of all, the easiest thing is to register at the walkwithaegis.com website that you see on there. Um, and you can, you can register as a consumer group itself or an individual. You want to make sure you take some time and designate some time every day to, for that physical component of, of health and wellness, 15 to 30 minutes. After you log in, you will establish your login ID and password. Um, and that's what will allow you to get into the site every day and download and print events, activity instructions, um, for, for your content every day. The info itself will lead you through one of the activities um, that supports one of the different dimensions of wellness. So the, the initiative of the walk is to incorporate a physical dimension of wellness every day, and then in addition to that, support a tertiary um, component of wellness as well. And I think I'll, I'll share that on a slide coming as well. Uh, but then you want to make sure you get on, access those resources, and log in every day to track your miles. And then on Friday, make sure you come back and get on the website and print off your, your certificate of completion for, for yourself or your organization or the individuals that, that, that are participating with you. Um, and registration is really easy. As you can see on there, um, www.walkwithaegis.com will bring you to our, our Walk with Aegis website. You can see the registration tab on there. Uh, registration itself will be all through the month of August and up to and including uh, Active Aging Week. Um, so it will be ongoing from, I believe it's August 3rd, that first Monday in August, and, uh, and will, be, will be ongoing. So make sure you log on get your user ID and password, and access all of the free tools and resources that, that we have there on the website. As I mentioned earlier, the, the Walk with Aegis event celebrates the physical dimension of wellness, but also uh, all of these additional needed dimensions of wellness as well. So along with that physical dimension on Monday, we celebrate intellectual wellness, and we have trivia and anagrams and fun facts um, Tuesday is emotional, so we have some relaxation, um, self-massage uh, techniques that we use. Wednesday is spiritual, Thursday is occupational, and then Friday is, uh, is a social day. Um, so we want to incorporate that physical dimension, as I said, but, but not forget about everything else that makes us uh, a well-rounded individual. The event guide and resources itself, once you're registered, um, please make sure you do come back, log in, and there's a resource tab on the very top of the, uh, of the website as well. And you'll be able to hit that resource tab and then pull up all this free information and, and resources to really make your event um, either for a day or for the week uh, really, really alive. Um, very important, we want to make sure that, that we track your progress and the progress that you contribute towards um, all the miles that, that we walk. So make sure you log back in. Uh, click on the tab at the top that says Log Your Miles, and it will track how much you, you or your organization has walked, and then also what you've contributed to the total. As I mentioned last year, um, we walked uh, right at 100,000 miles. Um, so we want to make sure that, that we beat that, that this year. Make sure that you follow us uh, and, and, and like us in social media. We want to make sure that 
Um, we capture all the great things you are doing. So take your selfies and take your pictures and post them out there. Use the hashtag WalkAegis and, and we will help compile all that stuff and, and uh, make a nice sizzle reel at the end of the year that, that has all of the great things that, that are out there and all the great things that we have done. If you want to take your, your programming to the next level, on our Walk with Aegis website you can get t-shirts and yoga mats and water bottles and all those things as well. If you, if you choose to do that, know that those resources are out there. Um, and, and last but not least, don't forget the Walk with Aegis event is about inclusion. Anyone can participate. It can be a, a community. It can be a VFW. We have had VFWs uh, in the past participate. Um, skilled nursing facilities, police and fire departments, senior centers, and then just an individual living out there on Main Street has, has participated as well. Um, and so we want to make sure that we, we do spread the word and get as many people participating um, as possible. I want to thank you for your time. and We hope that you, you log in on the, the walkwithegis.com website and participate with us for a, a fun week during Active Aging Week. Um, thank you. Pat? And thank you, Brian, for explaining all those things. I really appreciate the multidimensional approach that you have there. Now I realize that the registration is uh, online, of course. And we have one question from one of our listeners. Um, many people in their community, she works in a CCRC, and most of their uh, residents are not, uh, don't have that ready access to a computer or know how to log in by themselves. How would she help her residents participate in this program? Yeah, fantastic question. Uh, when you register, you can register as, as a group setting or an individual. So theoretically, if, if you're an individual out there that's managing uh, several individuals, you can log in as an organization. And then when you, uh, you can print all those resources, make them readily available to all the participants uh, that you, you have actively engaged that week. And then when you come back in every day, you can log the total number of participants as well as that total time um, to log their miles as a group. So again, when you register, you'll just register as a group instead of an individual. And you'll be able to have all that access. And, and the data that you come back in and, and input will just be that of, of the entire group rather than just an individual. Oh, that's a really good point. So it really opens up the door to everybody. Yes. Well, Brian, thank you so much. Uh, now that we've done our walk on Tuesday, uh, you brought into the picture the importance of the social dimension, all the dimensions of wellness. And that social dimension is part of Tuesday, Say Hello. So I'm happy to introduce Bruce Peterson. He's the Senior Director of Marketing for Caption Call, and he's going to tell us about this brand new Say Hello program. Hello, Bruce. Hey, Pat. Thanks so much for uh, allowing us to participate here with you with, uh, as part of Active Aging Week. And thanks to Bob and Brian for setting the stage. This is a great program, and what I hope to do in the few minutes that we have uh, where I can talk with you is to introduce you to Caption Call, ask you some questions about why this matters to you, and hopefully convince you that um, there are additional things you can do to address the hearing health of the residents that are in your facilities, and then to walk you through some of the program that we have, this Say Hello program that's been designed specifically for ICAA's Active Aging Week. So have you heard about Caption Call before? Um, we've been in business since about 2011, and we service now tens of thousands of individuals with hearing loss who have lost the ability to hear on the telephone. Caption Call is a captioned telephone service, much like Caption TV where you see what people are saying on TV. Caption telephone service allows you to read what the other party is saying in, in real time. So Caption Call provides a phone that we design and produce. Uh, it's got custom audio settings, provides, and it also provides captions of what the other caller is saying on a large, easy-to-read easy to display. We have grown from 2011 to now being the industry leader in captioned telephone service. 
And we really just love what we do, just like you do. Um, we love to help people with hearing loss stay socially engaged for a longer and happier life, indeed helping them continue to live the adventure of life. In terms of why this matters, how, how many of you deal with people with hearing loss? I, as we age, more and more people experience difficulty hearing, and the telephone can be especially difficult. Hearing, hearing loss impacts our quality of life. Uh, and as you think about how many times you use the telephone every day, what would happen if you couldn't use that phone? Sometimes it's hard for us to hear on the phone. And if you have a little bit of a hearing loss or a lot of hearing loss, it can make it impossible. It's, it's been shown, studies have shown recently that when we are not engaged with our hearing, if we can't hear, it impacts our cognitive and social well-being. Um, Bob mentioned the two little miracles at the end, attached to the end of our legs as our feet. Um, sometimes we think about hearing as being associated with the two little miracles on the sides of our head, but hearing is much more than that. Hearing is a cognitive process, and when we are listening, when we engage our sensory capabilities, that engages billions of neurons in our brains. And if that stimulus is reduced or eliminated, it has impacts on our cognitive well-being. And recent studies show that there is um, atrophy and shrinkage of the brain when there is not cognitive or uh, hearing stimulating our brains. So hearing loss must be addressed if we are to indeed live our adventure, to live a, a cognitively healthy life. And so the good news is, there are things that we can do <clears throat> about it. Intervention is possible and it does make a difference. So the second reason why you should care about Caption Call is Caption Call is free. Caption Call is part of a federal program that is free as a, a part of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Um, if people have hearing loss, then they are entitled to equal or functionally equivalent access to the telephone. So uh, there are some qualification criteria. First, you have to have difficulty hearing on the phone. Second, in order to receive the phone and the service for free, that hearing loss must be certified by a hearing care professional. We have a very easy way of doing that. And they also have to have access to a phone line and internet. We then provide what we call our red carpet service. We provide free in-person setup of the phone. We provide free in-person training and free ongoing customer service and technical support. So Caption Call is one way that you can help address this hearing loss that's so prevalent in older residents. So let me introduce you now to some of the program elements that we have available as part of Say Hello. Um, these are all available on the ICAA website, and you'll see a link to those on the following slides. So the, the program objectives are to offer ideas and solutions to combat loneliness and isolation, and to encourage older, older adults to conscientiously reach out and say hello in person or by telephone, and to inspire them to check and care for their hearing. So let me introduce you to these elements. The first is a Say Hello workshop. This is a 40 to 45 minute workshop that is, uh, would be managed by one of our caption call specialists. We have them all across the United States. It's a training about the impact of hearing loss on our health. Our, we'll bring a raffle and light refreshments. And there's also a flyer to help promote that activity. We have a mini, uh, a Say Hello mini expo. And in this green box on the right side are the activity stations that we propose as part of that, from a hearing health screening, a caption call demo, some activity cards, and so forth. Those are all available to you through the website. You can use some or all of those activities. Um, this one we're just finishing, the Say Hello card deck. It's a deck of 25 cards that's available for you and your residents at no cost. You can engage and get those through the website. They're a really fun, interactive way to think about and learn about hearing and the cognitive impacts. We'll have an overall program guide as well as a tip sheet that are all available to you as part of the program. Thank you, Pat. Back to you. <laughs> Thanks so much, Bruce. I do appreciate that. I think that's a great program first to really raise awareness of the cognitive issues surrounding hearing, as you say, a more complex system than we might think, and then all the elements that are coming forward. 
uh, particularly on the card deck and some of and the workshops. Very nice, thank you. I've noticed that a lot of Active Aging Weeks do bring in health education uh, seminars uh, during Active Aging Week as part of a health fair or as part of an independent programming. Uh, and that these are very well received because often they'll get older adults attending them that don't typically uh, visit some of the programs that are being offered. And uh, we have one question uh, for you, Bruce. Just is there a particular address or, or how do the people order those cards or activities? On the ICAA website, they can contact, uh, contact us through the website and order as many of those decks of cards as, there, as they need. My email is also in the last slide there, and they're welcome to reach out to me um, so that we can get them all the materials that they might need. All right, thank you. And for everyone, I just put into the chat box the website for the Active Aging Week where you'll find the resources for all of these theme days listed so that you can access them. Well, now we've been halfway through the week, and it's a very exciting week already, but now we're going to change medium. And Wednesday, take the plunge. I love that name. So we go to the, a different medium. Uh, with SwimX, and we have today to tell us more about what's on offer, Jason Kowalder, I'm sorry, Jason. He's a senior physical therapist at Brigham and Women's Hospital, and he's speaking for SwimX. Hi, Jason. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Pat. Thank you for having me today, and I want to say hello to all the listeners out there. <clears throat> I wanted to start the talk by saying that aquatic exercise is in a largely growing field of in exercise as well as in rehabilitation, preventative medicine, and sports enhancement as pools are going up all over the country in our major uh, sports teams and facilities and active living facilities to get people more active and back to a healthier life. Um, I'm going to talk today uh, to everyone about why and what we can do in our pools. And so here are my objectives of my talk. I'm going to discuss the benefits of exercise in water, uh, basic exercise examples. I'm going to, we're going to be creative in water, and we're going to have group class creativity in water. So the benefits of aquatic therapy or exercise, water buoyancy provides less joint stress, less joint stress provides less pain, which provides more effective workouts, which builds strength and endurance, and makes a better well-being for a healthier life. So water buoyancy, pretty much the deeper you are, the less you weigh. Therefore, you have less stress on your joints. This diagram here in the middle of the screen shows that your depth uh, changes the amount of body weight you have. So if you're up to your chest, you're only you're 75% in the water in only 25% body weight. Um, another way to think of water buoyancy is that it supports and assists our body in motion. For example, if we're moving our arm in water, it's easier than moving our arm on land, or walking in water is easier than walking on land, which decreases the compensation that we would use if we were to do something that was too difficult. Here's a quick example of a patient that I treated, and I'm going to go over this very quickly, but as you can see, it's a 45-year-old female. She entered in a wheelchair. She had 34 surgeries, 27 on the right, 7 on the left knee, and she had pain standing after 5 seconds. Now, at, going back to that picture of the water buoyancy, I was able to progress her weight-bearing activity in the water, and I finally got her walking on land and she was able to walk down the aisle at her wedding. And without water, I would not have been able to perform any of these tasks. And it was a pretty happy story for the individual. Um, this is a video that can be found on the ICA website um, of our week. Um, there are many video links to videos. This one shows uh, hip strengthening exercises with progressions, um, pretty much the hip a progression would be being against the wall or supporting the trunk or the core and then going out into the middle of the pool just like this picture shows. 
Um, this video shows med ball chops are using a heavy ball to do movements with the with the arms and the shoulders. As in this in this picture, it shows a current or some type of water pushing against the individual as she's trying to stabilize her trunk with moving her movements, moving her arms. I'm sorry. Um, this video is on the ICA website. It shows someone walking with a kickboard, and this is for to strengthen the core as she's walking forward, the water resistance is going to hit the kickboard and want to spin the person or rotate the person. So the further out the kickboard, the harder it is. Um, this is, shows deep water running. This person's wearing a uh, kind of a safety vest around their waist to help them float and they're just running in place going through the motions. Um, and this is for a more higher level uh, person to exercise in the water. Um, and then this is where we get to be nice and creative. I actually implemented this into a client the other day. Um, it's doing aqua yoga. So she was able to perform yoga type exercises in the pool. And as we see here, we have the downward dog and the upward dog to help with stretching and relaxation of our individuals. Uh, here's the child's pose and relaxation floating on the floating noodles um, as she is just going into her relaxation state. Um, also, we have one of our facilities at the Carolina Spine Neurological Center. Um, they do group classes for aqua yoga um, and they're finding it a very big success and the patients love it and this can be of all ages as you see in this picture. We have some people in the pool and some people out of the pool, depending on the level um, of their strength and with the exercises. Another group class that is going on right now at Brigham Women's Hospital at Gillette Stadium, where our New England Patriots play, or my New England Patriots play. Um, we have Aqua Zumba, and we cannot get enough room in our pool for all the people that want to participate in this activity, as it's dance-type movements. Um, in the pool as our instructor is outside the pool and this instructor is jumping up down all excited for all of these individuals. Um, so here are our resources. I want to say thank you for having um, us today and feel free to contact us with any questions or concerns or comments. Um, you can contact us at the swimx.com site or the ICAA site. Thank you. And thank you, Jason. Boy, there's a lot of activities you showed us, both individual exercises and group ideas. I have a question for you. In the earlier videos that focused on individual exercises, are those one that people can should just pick one and incorporate into uh, an aquatics uh, program they may already have in place? Or is it that they should be, you know, several of those should be used sequentially. Hmm. So you can you can pick and choose any not any, but the ones that you want to see where your patient your client population is before you decide to implement any of the videos to make sure that everything that they can perform anything successfully and not have to kind of cheat their way through the exercise and not be able to get through it. So depend on each individual that's in the class. Um, I would say they, our slideshow goes in order of probably progression. So the hip strengthening exercise would be, you know, on the easier end of things. And then, you know, the kickboard is a little bit harder. And then the running, obviously, the hardest. Uh, does that help answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you very much. Uh, as a reminder to everyone, videos of all the exercises Jason introduced to us are available on the ICAA website so you can see the complete activity and how to do them. A great addition uh, during September and Active Aging Week. So we're going to go back into a different area of the lives of older adults and of our programming. And on Thursday, we're focusing on good things to eat. And I have noticed that many of you include nutrition as a distinct element of the physical dimension uh, within Active Aging Week. So I'm very pleased we're going to learn more about the offerings on Good Things Thursday 
from Cisco, and we have with us today Robbie White. She's the manager of marketing and communications healthcare at Cisco to tell us about them. Welcome, Robbie. Thank you so much, Pat, and thank you everyone for um, taking time out of your day today to hear about all these great ideas with Active Aging Week. This is Cisco's first year to be a sponsor of Acting Aging, Active Aging Week, and we're um, very excited about it. Um, very proud to be associated with ICAA and such a positive message of healthy living to our seniors. Um, so Thursday, Good Things Thursday, brings accolades to more than 200 varieties of fruits and vegetables available to us. And we'll offer, offer several ways to promote fruits and vegetables in your communities. And the categories for Good Things Thursday are um, community information, a few games, recipes, and a chef contest. So now I will quickly review what we have in store for October. Pat, you can, you can hear me okay? Yes, I can. Thank you. Okay, super. Thank you. Hmm. Okay, so the first um, item I wanted to quickly review are the printables or the community information that is available on the website. And one of the unique benefits to fruits and vegetables are the vast, num vast number of phytochemicals that they provide and the positive impact that they have on our health. So we will have education material regarding phytochemicals courtesy of the Produce for Better Health Foundation and um, what, what phytochemicals are, how they benefit our body, and common consumer questions. And in addition, Produce for Better Health also has a listing of websites that are great resources for um, learning more about phytochemicals, fruits and vegetables in general, and obtaining recipes. And to engage um, the members of the community, well, we have a couple games that are posted on the website. We have a matching game and a crossword puzzle also with a um, uh, theme of fruits and vegetables and trivia. And these can be downloaded and printed to be used um, at activity times in the communities. And also included is a veggie challenge for the month of October. Um, we'd like to promote a variety of fruits and vegetables and challenge the community. Actually, it's just all vegetables, um, since those sometimes seem tougher to, to fit into our day. Um, so we'd like to challenge the community chefs to use 31 different veggies over the course, in, during the course of October. So that is also posted. And we have a few, uh, several recipes posted, and one of those is a smooth, uh, smoothie. It's a fruit and kale smoothie. And they all have nutritional analysis included with the recipe. You can access those there. And lastly, um, our final area is a chef photo contest. And the primary ingredient for this photo, for the photo must be a vegetable and it must be prepared at the community. And each chef, or if there's not a technical chef, each employee may submit up to three different photos per community. And um, when we get closer to the time, we'll um, provide a drop event website where um, you can upload the photos or email them, and that information will be forthcoming, and then they can be submitted, in, submitted anytime during the month of October. And the photo entry needs to include, of course, um, contestant name, the recipe name, the community name and a contact email so we can contact you if you are the lucky winner. And the photos will be judged on image quality and visual appeal. And we'll, have, we'll select three top photos from what we receive. And the first prize will receive a $300 gift card and second $200. And third prize will receive a $100 Visa gift card. And so that wraps up um, our Good Things Thursday. We have community information, um, a few games, a veggie challenge, the recipes, and of course the photo contest. So we look forward to acting aging week at the end of September, beginning of October, and definitely look forward to seeing some of your fabulous photos. So thank you again so much for your time today and um, for your attention. Thank you, Pat. Well, Robbie, thank you so much, and thank you for that quick review. 
I am going to go off the point just a minute. There has been a lot of background noise uh, during this presentation, so we could hear you, but if someone has their line open, please uh, mute it. Now, Robbie, I have a question for you. Uh, in terms of the Chef Photo Contest, which I find uh, to be a very interesting idea and certainly a first time, um, you said the photos would be judged on quality of the photo and the presentation. What about nutrition? Is there going to be any element of nutritional value? Well, n not so much, but it needs to be of a vegetable, so I think nutrition is taken care of. So it's all good. <laughs> so not nutrition necessarily, no. And what have you found uh, during your travels? It, do many older adults need a little extra help uh, to figure out how to eat, uh, how to cook, or how to eat fruits and vegetables? Yes, I think it's um, as we get older, we don't want to eat as we don't have a desire to eat as much, and things don't taste as good. So, uh, consequently, we don't get some of the vitamins and minerals and fiber that we need as we age. So, um, definitely promoting. Uh, higher fruits and vegetable intake helps improve health and how you feel. Oh, that's great. I feel that uh, in Active Aging Week, uh, in the past years, hosts do have presentations on nutrition, but they're not always as dynamic uh, as the resources that you're offering here. Of course, I'm prejudiced in favor of vegetables, so there you have it. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. <laughs> you're welcome. I'd like to remind everybody that if you do have questions or comments, do please put them into the chat box. And also give you a heads up that when this webinar is open, is over rather, a survey will pop up on your screen and we do hope that you please answer it because that will help us very much in planning going forward. Now the week is wrapping up, but we still have some great activities coming up. And another new activity for you is to help your older adults get Skin Health Smart. And to tell us more about this program is Melissa Mitchell. She's the Director of Programs and Communications for Nestle Skin Health. Thank you for joining us, Melissa. Great. Thank you so much, Pat. Um, I appreciate the time here today. And we have made it to Friday. Each day seems to be exciting, um, but who doesn't love Friday? So we are very delighted um, in partnership with the Global Coalition on Aging. Nestle Skin Health is just really delighted to be part of Active Aging Week for the first time this year. So thanks, Pat, to you and to Colin for including us. And you know, today I think I'm going to tell you a little bit more just about why skin health matters as we age. And I think our participation this year really aims to help build the awareness of this important issue for active aging, which we don't always think about, um, and how that leads to you know, more healthy, more active aging, keeping us socially engaged, um, and keeping a higher quality of life um, as we age. So I'm really glad to bring these um, ideas to you today and, some of the, and share some of the materials that we'll have in store for you coming up um, during Active Aging Week. So I don't have to get into too much detail with this audience. We all know um, that there will be a billion people over 60 in just a few short years, and that's a great thing. And that's um, why we're all here today is to figure out how to ensure that we stay as active and healthy as possible. But what I am here to share today is that you know, each and every one of those people over 60 and each and every one of us on the call, each and every one of us on the planet is going to have deteriorating skin in some way, shape, or form. And um, this gift of longevity really means we all need to take steps to be more active and more healthy, and our skin health really is one important pathway to help us do just that. So you may have never thought of this, and I hope that we can bring some attention to this issue through Active Aging Week, but our skin is our largest organ, and it changes each step across our life course, from being an infant to being a teen, um, preteen, adolescent, to becoming an adult and in the geriatric phases of life. Um, our skin is different, and it requires a different type of care, um, and so therefore it needs to be protected and treated in different ways. 
in our skin because it is our largest organ. It protects us from outside environment, injuries, and infection that can um, enter our bodies, things that can harm us like UV rays, outside pollutants, um, bacteria, and other infections. And simply because we're living longer, we have to um, look at our skin um, in a more attentive way and protect it um, in a different way simply because it has to last longer as we live longer. So just some of the details and why this really should matter as we're looking at Active Aging Week. Um, over the course of our time, our skin will have um, changing factors extrinsically and intrinsically. So from the external perspective, as I mentioned, those pollutants um, and outside factors and internally through genetic issues um, and the food that we eat. Um, these are things that could cause us to um, not take care of our skin as well as we should. And as we age, we've all seen that our skin becomes fragile and more prone to infection. It's drier, it's thinner, it's less elastic and more susceptible to outside harm. And sometimes there are also side effects of chronic diseases when we take medications and our skin can bear the brunt of some of those negative side effects. In addition, our poor skin health can degrade our overall health and increase health costs. So when you think about the connection between things like um, foot health, which have been talked about today, sometimes skin issues in our foot um, can cause falls, can cause balance issues, and can cause wounds. And sometimes skin issues um, from an appearance point of view also can have an impact on mental and emotional health. And when you put all these things together and combined with not paying much attention, as much attention to our skin health as we should, that can lead to increased hospitalizations, um, increased costs, and increased care needs. And these are the things we certainly want to avoid to make sure we stay as active and involved in society as possible. So all of this together really does underscore the need to have a life course approach to skin health. Um, and it certainly is never too late to start because if we pay attention to and treat um, our structure and function and appearance of our skin, we can truly improve the quality of our life um, for, for aging populations. So just to make connections for you today, as I mentioned, I think it's important to just begin the awareness process. And we will provide a lot of tools that um, will help you sort of go through some of these issues as well um, with the folks that you're participating in Active Aging Week with. Um, but here are some of the possible outcomes and some of the hopeful outcomes if we get skin health smart. Um, so as I mentioned, you know, for false prevention, we make sure that we are looking at issues related to diabetes or fungal infections. We can prevent false. Secondly, if we are ensuring that we hydrate and cleanse our skin in a proper way, we can reduce hospital admissions and readmissions. Thirdly, if we pay attention to and make sure that we um, look at how we treat ourselves with cancer, so how we prevent skin cancers from melanoma to non-melanoma skin cancer, and also treatment of the side effects of drugs that we take um, for cancer treatments, like chemotherapies, um, which do have negative effects on our skin. If we treat some of those, we are, we're ensuring that we can stay more active as well. And all that really leads to the importance of our skin health and keeping us well and keeping us involved in social activity. And that can have a huge benefit on how people can stay involved in the economy, to participate, to have jobs, to volunteer, um, and also to avoid isolation, which is some of what we've talked about here today. So some of these issues are definitely um, part of what some of my other colleagues here have talked about, because it really is all about getting, getting people involved um, in understanding the impacts of healthy skin and how we can um, take initiatives um, to educate about this issue um, and to provide you with some tools and resources. So how is Nessie Skin Health going to help you get skin health smart during Active Aging Week? Um, we are going to provide a number of resources on the Active Aging website, um, and we're developing these educational materials to help care for, to detect, to treat, and prevent some of these, skill, um, some of these skin ailments to help you and to help all those involved stay active. So here's um, a sample of some of our tools that we'll be providing for you. Um, first of all, in the upper left-hand corner, we're going to have a diagram on common skin conditions um, in aging adults to help people detect um, and prevent and early treat some of the skin conditions that occur as we age. So to be able to have a clearer sense of what those look like and how to um, go ahead and reach out early about um, how to treat those, uh, treat those issues. We're going to provide a number of training guides and tools on skin health and active aging to bring attention to how you care for your skin at, the, at, at a particular stage in life. So 
you know, clearly as we talked about the different ages, you're going to take care of your skin in a different way when you're 30 years old as you are when you're 65 years old or when you're 85 years old. So we'll provide some helpful tools and tips for that. We're also going to provide a number of did you know fact sheets that can tell you more about how to treat and prevent dry skin, um, and also how to care for a loved one with skin cancer, and a number of different other did you know fact sheets that will be helpful. We'll also provide a PowerPoint deck, a presentation, so that you can walk through all of these issues um, with those who are participating in Active Aging Week um, to build up the education and to get people involved in um, the questions around skin health. Um, and we'll also provide a number of movies that explain the intrinsic and the extrinsic um, impacts of, um, skin can of, skin, of skin health and how your skin changes as it ages. And it'll, these movies will take you deep into the layers of your skin to show you how it protects you and how it changes as you age. This is just a sample of a number of the materials that we're going to provide to you um, to ensure that everyone who's involved in Active Aging Week is more educated um, about skin health and how keeping you um, keeping your skin healthy will keep you um, more active as you age. So I hope this has given you a little bit of information about where we are coming from and the importance of this issue. And please feel free to reach out to me with questions. We'll be having all of these materials on the Active Aging um, website in the coming days and weeks. Um, and we'll look forward to working with you. Well, thank you very much, Melissa. I think that uh, what you just told us about the importance of skin health was uh, revealing, and I'm really looking forward to seeing those materials. You know, one thing that we do know from research, as well as probably from your personal experience, is that what really matters to people is that the programs you offer, the opportunities you offer them are, have a purpose, and I think all of the presenters today have a real purpose and a real goal in providing this diverse amount of materials and make it meaningful for older adults. So I appreciate all of the presenters today who have told us why they do have a purpose, the value for older adults, and how to make those meaningful. Now we're coming to the end of the week, and Colin Milner, I'm happy to have you here. Uh, so that you could help us celebrate and uh, bring us to the conclusion of Active Aging Week this year. Well, thank you, Pat. And uh, just a reminder for everyone, uh, Active Aging Week is activeagingweek.com. That's where all of these wonderful tools are going to be. Matter of fact, <coughs> uh, I was sitting back just thinking to myself, wow. Imagine if I had to put together all of this information for my residents or my members, the, the amount of time it would take, and it's sitting there right there for your picking, along with a multitude of other um, resources that ICAA has put together. So I encourage you to take advantage of these um, and use them in the way you see fit. Everybody is individual. So please, uh, I will leave you with this, and that is we all have a body. How we take care of this body impacts our quality of life in many instances, if not all instances, whether it is our feet, our hearing, our skin. And what we eat and put in our body dictates our energy levels that enables us to go for the walk or have a swim and to live our adventure. So all of these areas all come together to enable us to do just that. And we hope that they will help you uh, and enable you to provide more resources for your residents and your members during Active Aging Week. So we look forward to hearing from each and every one of you and how your Active Aging Week celebration went. But more importantly, make an impact. Get involved with your residents and enjoy the experience. So on that note, Pat, uh, thank you very much for hosting today. Thank you uh, to all of our different sponsors who uh, have some terrific resources. And I look forward to hearing from each and every one of you about your Active Aging Week celebration. And uh, I'll let you say goodbye, Pat. Well, thank you so much. A uh, great conclusion for all of us. We are very pleased that all of you promote Active Aging Week. You can find us ongoing in addition to the www.activeagingweek.com website, on Twitter, 
uh, go to the Facebook uh, page, which is a link from that website, which has a lot of upcoming activities. And you might want to save the date, August 3rd, for the next webinar about Active Aging Week, which would be publicizing your event. We do appreciate everything that you do. And I want to say thank you very much to all of our presenters who are with us today to discuss their resources as well as their generosity in offering them. And you, all of you, have a good rest of your day. Thank you.